Yo, what's up everyone, it's Gad, and in this video we're finally adding in the animations for the weapon switching, and then also the logic and how we can add as many weapons as we want to our loadout, and then how we can scroll through them all. And then, so that's basically everything that we're doing in this video, so let's just go straight into it. Alright, so the first thing that we're going to want to do is go to the weapon class manager that we made in the last episode. And then once we're in here, we're going to create two new variables, and then the first one is going to be a public, and it's going to be a weapon manager array. I'm going to call this weapons, which is just going to be an array of all the weapons that we can scroll through. And then the next is just going to be an integer for the current weapon index. And then after that, we can create the awake function. And then in here, first of all, we're just going to set the current weapon index to be equal to zero. So we always start on the first weapon. And then we're going to create a for loop here, which is for in i is equal to zero, and i is less than the weapons dot length. And then finally, i plus plus. And then first of all, we're going to check if i is equal to zero. Then what we're going to do is just go weapons and then i dot game object dot set active, and this is going to be set active to true. Not a transform. It will be set active to true. And then else, what we're going to do is basically the same except just turn them off. So then we're just going to set these all to false. And then so after we've done that, at the bottom, I'm going to create a new function here which is going to be a public void, and I'm going to call this change weapon. And then in here, we want to pass in a float, and then I'm going to call this one direction, which is if we just scrolled up or down, so it's going to depend on which weapon we're going to go to. And then, so first of all, I'm going to go weapons, and then set the current weapon index, dot game object, dot set active. And this is going to be set to false. And then next, we're just going to check if the direction is less than zero, so we're scrolling down. Then what we're going to do is check first of all if the current weapon index is equal to zero which means we obviously can't go to index of minus one so what we need to do is set the current weapon index to be equal to the weapons dot length and then minus one and then else simply what we can do is just go current weapon index and minus minus and then so basically we'll kind of want to do the same thing for if we're scrolling up so it's going to go else, and it's just going to be if the current weapon index is equal to the weapons dot length minus one. So we're at the last one in the array. So we're just going to set the current weapon index to be equal to zero. And then else is just going to be current weapon index plus plus. And then after that, I'm going to create two new functions. The first one is just going to be a public void for weapon put away. And this is when we're going to be triggering this change weapon function, but we're going to do it in an animation event. And then the next one is just going to be public void, and it's going to be weapon pulled out. And we're not going to write anything in here yet. What we're going to do is go back to our scripts folder. And then I'm going to go into the action states folder here. And I'm going to right click create a new C sharp script. And then I'm going to call this the swap state. And then so in this class we've just created, first of all, we're going to inherit from the action base state. And then like what we've done before for the reload and the default state, we just need to override the two functions. So it's public override void. And then this one's the enter state. And then we can delete this line of code. I'm going to copy and paste this one. And then just change the name to be the update state. And for now, that's all we can do. And we need to head over to the action state manager. And then so in here, we just need to set up this new state. So we can just go public. And this is called the swap state. Call it swap and then equal it to a new swap state. And now we need to know when we should be transitioning to the swap state. So that's in the default state here. So in here, first of all, what we're going to do is create a public float. The public float, and this is going to be for the scroll direction. And that's what we're going to be putting into the function in the weapon class manager. And then so underneath this if statement here, it's going to go else if, and it's going to be the input dot I think it's mouse scroll oh, input dot mouse scroll delta dot y if it does not equal zero, which obviously means that it's either gone to one or a minus one, then what we're going to do is set the scroll direction equal to exactly the same thing here. And then finally, we can just go actions dot switch state and then switch to the actions dot swap. And then for now, that's all we can do again, and we need to import the animations. And then so I've gone over to my animations folder here, and then I'm just going to drop in these animations I've downloaded off Mixamo. 
And then, so we just need to quickly set these up. So I'm going to select both of them, go onto the rig, change the animation type to be humanoid. And we want to copy from our other avatar. And then the avatar is going to be the player avatar once again. And then we just need to change the name of the animations. Yours might be the right ones, but mine are not. So I'm going to call this one pull out weapon. And then I'll just apply that and change this one to put away weapon. Weapon. <laughs> weapon. Apply that. And then I'm just going to go open up the FBX and duplicate out the animation. And then do the same for the other one. And then finally we can just delete these two FBXs. So now what we need to do is go ahead and set these up in the animator. So I'm going to open that up and we need to go to the shooting layer. And then so I'm going to drag in the weapon put away and the weapon pull out. And then we want to go from any state to the put away weapon and then any state from the, <laughs> not any state, put away weapon to the pull out weapon and finally pull out weapon to the exit. And we need to create a new parameter here, which is going to be a trigger, which I'm going to call swap weapon. And then so for the transition from any state to put away weapon, we want the condition to be that swap state or swap weapon. And then also from put away weapon to pull out weapon, we want the exit time to be on but we want to change the exit time to be zero. And then the same from pull out weapon to exit, we want to change the exit time to be zero. And then so now what we need to do is go back to the swap state here and we can go anim, or not anim, we need to go actions.anim and then dot set trigger. And then we want to set the swap weapon trigger. And then also what we want to do is turn off the IK for the hand and the, or the right hand and the left arm. We go actions dot left hand IK dot weight and we want to set this one equal to zero and then the same for the right hand aim uh, set the weight to be equal to zero and now we're almost done and we need to head over to the weapon class manager and just put some code in these two functions here and then so for the weapon put away we just want to run this change weapon function and then pass in the actions dot default dot scroll direction and then before we do anything else, I forgot to do this earlier, but at the end of this change weapon function, we want to set the new current weapon index to be equal to true. Otherwise, it's just going to set false and then nothing else is going to set true. And now finally, in the weapon pulled out function, we just want to run actions.switch state and then switch to the actions.default. And so now what we need to do is run these functions in the animation events. So if we go back into Unity, select the player and press control and six and it will bring up the animation window here and then so for the first one we want to do is the weapon put away or put away weapon scroll to the end of the timeline right click at the top add the animation event and then the function is going to be for weapon put away and then when we go on pull out weapon scroll to the end again add another event and then just do the other one so weapon pulled out and then so now this is going to work, but there is one more thing that we need to do and I'll show you in a sec. But you can see we've pressed the scroll wheel, or not, we scroll the scroll wheel. And it's not going to work because we haven't actually put anything in the weapons array in the inspector. So I'm just going to add two weapons here and then find where the weapons are. And then so add in the M4 here and add in the weapon base. And then so it doesn't matter if both of these are inactive when the game starts. So I'll just show you here, we'll play it. And now hopefully it should work. If we scroll down, there you go, you see we swapped to the other weapon. So the problem that I was talking about earlier is, so if I start shooting here, well, <laughs> I need to swap first. And then you can see, you can shoot constantly while you're switching weapons. And then, so that's really easy to fix. And we just want to go to the weapon manager. And then, so I can just press F12 on this one here. And then, so where we've got the should fire method, somewhere in here underneath this last return false we're just going to create a new if statement which is going to be if actions dot current state is equal to the actions dot swap not switch state swap and then so if that's true we just want to return false so now we can just test this out and you can see if i swap the weapon and i start holding the shoot button nothing's happening until the weapon's pulled out and then you might see another little bug that when the weapon comes out, the arm spazzes out a little bit. And then for some reason, it's just because of um, 
in the default state when the left hand IK weight gets lurped back to one it just kind of doesn't really know how to do it properly like how to move the arm there naturally that's why it looks all weird and then so the only real way to fix it is just to set it equal to one and I don't know why but you cannot do this in the enter state it's not going to change it back to one and it's just going to stay at zero so for now the best thing to do really is just check if the actions dot left hand ik dot weight is equal to is equal to zero then we're just going to set it to one and i'll show you here it doesn't look too bad when we just set it to one manually instead of lerping it so you can see the arm just kind of snaps there a bit quicker so that's everything for this video i hope you enjoyed it and then i'll see you in the next one bye